So you want to go to Call Me Cat, eh? What, what, what do you mean? You came all the way here on a day where there's no event though. Oh, could you, could you just play along with this all right? Like we've come all the way here, like the camera's all set up and everything, just, just, just roll with it. But yeah, it's totally understandable that you would want to go after all. It is the biggest anime doujin event in Japan, if not the entire world. But that said, what it is, a pretty big event and many people do call it like the anime pilgrimage to some extent because of how crazy the scale of it is. It is also an event where it does get pretty packed. Y'all remember that picture of Anime Expo 2023? How people were talking about how everything looked insanely overflowed with people and like you were basically stuck next to pretty smelly fat neckbeards the entire time? Well, you can think of this as that, except that instead of fat smelly neckbeards, you have skinny Asian neckbeards hacking in the entire area for two to three days even. So, as you can imagine, it can get pretty stressful, especially since this event takes place in the middle of summer like this, or winter. And so it is very possible for a person to suffer from some level of weather injury as a result. And so you're gonna to want to make sure that you plan properly, both in terms of what you wanna do, as well as how to deal with the weather during the period if you wanna enjoy the event to the fullest. And so as someone who has been going to the event for more than 10 years at this point, let's talk about prepping. Hey, no, man, you're gonna come with me too. Psst. Psst. Hey, hey, over here. No, over here. Hey. <laughs> Welcome! Yeah, now you can see what is typically on the right whenever I'm filming. A little bit of a different angle from almost every other video, but yeah, it's a special occasion today, I think. So, yeah, why not? Anyway, when it comes to this event, the thing is that you're really gonna want to plan properly for it. And the first thing that you're probably gonna want to ask yourself is why do you want to go to this event? No, not, not, this is in some like philosophical question where you think like, I nude, therefore I coom, or some weird esoteric coomer stuff like that. Rather, it's due to the fact that depending on what you want to do at the event, the time that you probably should go down and the ticket that you should get will probably vary quite a fair bit. If you just want to go there and chill, you know, just feel the vibes of the event, see what it's like because some boomer anime you watched in 2024 featured a girl who went there and all. If that's the case, what you're gonna want to do is very different from the guy who's gonna go there with the goal of getting very specific things that he knows is gonna sell out. And I feel like the best way we can go about this is to basically explain things through the use of these four archetypes right here for the types of people who would want to go for the event. N none of this are meant to be used in a condescending pejorative form of manner. It really is just depending on how hard you want to try to get the stuff you want at the event, you're gonna want to consider preparing different things, hence why it is group like this. So we'll start off with the very first group, which are the casual people. Eh, you know, casually going to the event is something that many people will want to do just to experience the fights for it once. It's nothing bad or anything of the sorts. And the thing is, if you're planning to do this, and like as, as stated here, you're one of the kind of people who really do not want to try too hard for the event. You just want to feel the vibes more so than anything else. If you get something, that's cool. If you get nothing, that's fine. Either way, you don't know if you'll get arrested by your local government when you bring back the audience anyways. If that's you, I would probably recommend getting the afternoon tickets instead of the morning ones for the event. There are basically three tiers of tickets. You have early, morning, and afternoon. Wherein the early tickets are basically the people who get the first priority entry into the event. I think it costs about three to 4,000 yen as compared to the 1,000 for morning and the about 500 yen for afternoon. You should still be able to get a morning ticket. It should be on sale as I am making this video now. And the sales period for it is a lot longer. Check out the website, the official website, and see if there's anything about the overseas ticket sales and try to get your ticket beforehand. Else, if you're already here before the event, you can probably purchase it from like Melon Books or some other store that deals with this kind of 
Dojin Ticketing stuff. Now, many people would say that that's not a very good idea because many things do sell out in the morning as well. However, the thing is that if you really just want to go there to experience the vibes, you probably won't be queuing for the things that would sell out by the morning. Whereas, if you were to get the afternoon ticket, the ticket itself is cheaper. And this is the time where it would probably be the most packed. Because the people who came in the morning who have yet to buy all of their stuff would be there. The people who are less try hard than those who basically have been sitting there since 4am would also be here and probably have gone before you. And so if you wanted to experience the event at its maximum queue or crowd size, and you just want to like browse through and see what all of the different circles are selling, this might actually be the best time. But yeah, for the afternoon tickets, the entry time is around 12.30, so basically you're going to go in and still have about three and a half to four hours of actual exploration time left. Not too much, but then again, if all you want to do is just explore and just look around, it should be enough to just do that alone. One thing to note though is that some people who do buy the afternoon tickets actually queue pretty early, like actually do arrive at 7am on some of the days and see people queuing at the afternoon queue which is also set up at a time, starting at that time along with the morning queue people. So if you actually want to get in early, even the afternoon queue may be a little slow. So. If you want more time to the event, I recommend just either getting the morning ticket still. There are some important things to remember when you're considering booking your tickets though. First of which is the fact that when it comes to the morning tickets, the AM tickets, you have to purchase them in advance. The only ticket you can purchase on the spot on the day itself are the afternoon tickets, the PM ones. And even then, it is very, very dependent on whether or not there's even availability on the day itself. So you're going to want to ensure that if you want to go anything before afternoon, be it early or morning, you need to make sure that you purchase the respective ticket. Next is also the fact that you kind of don't really want to purchase or decide what ticket to purchase based off of what is being sold in the corporate booths. And by corporate booths, I mean the booths set up by anime or game companies to basically sell the goods for our series they're trying to push this time around. They only take up maybe like two of the west and maybe two of the south halls as compared to dojins taking up everything else. But sometimes the this place there can be pretty cool, and on top of that, the goods themselves, sometimes some of them sell fairly rare comic cat only goods. And this is one of the few events where you will see corporate booths for adult game and virtual novel companies as well. So more of, sort of your companies like your visual arts, your infinite brain, your basin, the one that created called him or so, all of them really only have corporate booths during comic cat because there isn't really any other big event for this kind of thing which allows adult content to this extent. But the issue with this corporate booth is that it takes a lot longer for information about any of these booths to come out. You'd think that being the big corporations they are of the hundreds of staff they have, they ought to be able to do this a lot quicker. But nah, it, the dude who runs his own single man, like one man show Dojin Circle tends to be able to get all the information out much quicker and more accurately than them. And this typically ends up being the case, like with Dojin Circles typically by like mid-June to end June, they would have already announced that their circle is confirmed. Some of them maybe have already announced their goods, but when it comes to the corporate ones, it tends to be between mid to end July instead. And by then, the early tickets would have ended like sales. I would say that you would want to just decide what ticket to purchase off of the Dojin Circles you want to visit and just treat the corporate booths as more of a bonus I guess. If you take the corporate one for the early access, what's gonna happen is basically that you're gonna be stuck in the corporate one for a fair bit of time before they release you to allow you to go to everything else. So unless you want to gamble like some kind of degenerate pachinko IQ up from 7am sort of gambler, I would say that isn't really an incentive to get the early ticket for corporate specifically. Next up we have the casual try hard which sounds like a little bit of an oxymoron. No my mom didn't drop me on my head when I was a kid. I, I think at least. I feel like if she did I'll probably have forgotten about it by now so who really cares anyway. What is important however is that these are basically the people who I would say they kind of want to try to get the stuff that they want as in they do have a target of stuff that they want to purchase at the event but even if they can't get it they're probably fairly fine with like not getting some of it either way. You know, the type of people who want to experience this whole queuing culture for some of the stuff that Connie Cat has, or maybe they just want to gun for the specific booths that they 
know or hope aren't too popular to the point that there's a queue but that they really are fans of the artist and they want to get the stuff that the artist created. So for this group of people and for every other group going forward, Basically, you guys are gonna need to start planning. And when I say planning, I don't just mean that like you put on your phone the circles, like you just save a link to like where their letter thing is. You have like what? Eight halls in East? You have four West halls and you have like two South halls typically there about that's being used. So corporate, dojin, everything combined, there's a lot of stuff going on. And so you don't really want to just go in with no plan. Even if you have the circles like, like listed on your phone, it's still going to be really difficult by virtue of the size of the crowd to then figure out where all of these individual circles are located. Because remember, even if it says like R1 to like 69 or something, the thing is that you still kind of need to figure out where in the hall the R1s to 69 are. And if you're just going in blind, it's going to be a lot tougher to ensure that you get to the points you want to before stuff might potentially sell out or before the crowds get too bad. So there are multiple ways you can go about doing this. The most budget way you can do it is to go on to the Comic Cat official catalog website because there is a separate website specifically for the catalog. You can use it as a free user as well, although certain features are locked. So what you can do as a free user is that you can look at the overall map and you can look at where specific series or IPs might be. So like if you're interested in Fate, for example, you can see Fate over there. You can click on that and it'll bring you to the part of the hall where Fate is. However, what you can't do as a free user is basically zoom in and look at the entire zoomed in map with all of the circles, like with their mini thumbnail being shown so you can easily see like what is being made by each circle because typically the circles will put a thumbnail relevant to what they're making. Some do a little bit of trolling and put something else instead, but for the most part it tends to be fairly accurate. If you just want the map itself, you could just basically take that map download it and use it to circle like using hand and paper which you, you might say like this is this caveman asking me to use paper <laughs> or something like that but the thing is with an event like this you kind of don't want to have your phone out too much either for one it's going to be really difficult to actually get internet connection within the hall depending on your service provider it actually could be the case that you get zero connection like there are times where i try to actually coordinate with friends like where to meet up within the hall and all of that and even then depending on the service provider like i think like rakuten mobile for example the thing is you don't want to rely too much on stuff being saved on like a cloud that might need internet access and even if it's on your phone and you look at the crowds at the event itself bro if you drop your phone in there it's gonna get swallowed up into the salak pit of like funny smelly neckbeards with a map it's a lot harder, I feel like, to lose it since you have a much bigger surface area to work with and grab onto and like you can easily store it away in your bag. Even if you lose it, it doesn't really matter as much. So what you could do and what I personally do is I'll basically print it out and then just use the map and just like circle the circles that I want to go to and just like maybe put a little bit of comment around the circle itself. The circle of the circle! Haha! <laughs> huh. No, okay, that wasn't really funny, but either way, you're gonna want to like at least do all of that. And then once you have done all of it, what I recommend is to look at all the circles you want to go to, which are the higher priority runs, and then you plan a route, like you just, I don't know, use like a pencil or something to just draw. Do you, do you guys even know what a pencil is? It's like a pen. Do you guys even know what a pen is at this point? A, okay, a pen is like a physical keyboard that you use your hand to move, to write on stuff. Yeah, now I'm gonna start wondering if you guys know what writing is, huh? But okay, jokes aside, you're just gonna want to ensure that you set a plotted path going through all of the circles that you want to from the maybe either the highest priority ones or the most efficient loop you can think of. And then maybe plan a backup line in case some of them have a very long queue. And maybe you want to like go through all the rest to ensure you get everything else, even if the one sells out, or maybe the start point of your route doesn't work out. You can just go the other way and just ensure that you get the stuff you want instead. You will probably want to purchase the morning ticket instead. But as to the exact time that you would want to go, the thing with the morning ticket is that you can technically arrive at any time of the day, even in the afternoon, and still go in. But if you really do want to ensure that you get the stuff that you want, uh, if you know that the circle is popular, or like one way you can gauge it is to 
basically look at the very popular circles out there, where you try to look for the bigger Dojin circles, the ones that people usually talk about, look at their Twitter followers, I guess. Like, if it's someone above the 500k follower range, you'd probably be expecting the queue to be fairly long, and so you want to check if the circles do have any limited goods. If they have limited goods, you might want to consider going at like maybe 7 a.m. and you probably want to gun for those circles first. And if they only sell just a book, typically it won't sell as badly. So you could probably, if like the circles that you want to go to, all of them, the most they're selling is a book, maybe at about 9, 10 a.m. thereabout. If they're somewhere between 250k to 500k, I would say maybe you would want to go at like 8 to 9, no, 9 might be too late, around 8 a.m. I would say, and you'll probably be able to get the stuff you want, unless they do have something very limited, in which case going at 7 might be better just to be safe. With luck, you'll probably be able to get everything that you want within the first two hours of entering the event hall, so you probably still have a quite a fair amount of time left to continue to explore the rest of the event if you really want to like see all the interesting weird stuff you can find there. You know, well, maybe you just really want to find a book of someone reviewing toilets made by a specific company. What, were you waiting for a punchline or something? No, 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 it actually did happen. I actually did find it in a previous Comic Cat right here, to be honest. And for the remaining two groups of you guys who are really planning to try out for this event, maybe even a little too hard, perhaps, well, I have something important to say to you guys before we go into this segment. Well, you guys might want to sit in and prepare real hard because this might turn into a little bit of a better feel at the event itself. For the next group of people, the tryhards of the event, basically I would say these are the people who have some specific circles they really really want to go to and they really don't want to miss as far as possible. Basically some of the big uh, wall circles they're called. Basically at the event itself, there are going to be some circles located near the walls and those circles tend to be there precisely because these are the circles that tend to sell a lot more than the other circles, so they take up the spaces to ensure that the queuing is a lot easier at the event. You know, it, it, it's in a way a system or like a thing of some level of prestige to be able to take and hold those positions since it really does mean that you're selling very really well. But especially if you're going to those and especially if it's the more popular groups among the people who can occupy those spaces, you probably want to go and queue fairly early if they have some limited goods especially. Maybe I would say like nowadays still, even at the last Comic Cat, you should be able to go at 7 and start queuing and you'll probably be able to get at least the first two highly popular circles that you're gunning for. If you really want to, you can consider coming all the way at the first train which arrives around 4.30am. Although I don't think they actually start forming the queues till 6am so 4.30 to 6, you kind of need to try to figure out where they start the queue, which as far as I recall in the past, it used to be fairly random. Like, I recall the one time that I actually did bother trying to do that for the morning segment, I actually ended up being at the very front of the queue. I, I think I still have the tweet of that happening at the time. Those are my boots over there. I think I showed it off in a previous video as well. But the thing is, they actually started forming the queue randomly at the station right beside the big site itself on the Yuri Kamome line. I, I think it's actually like the... Uh, yeah, it's called the Tokyo Big Site Station on the Yuri Kamome line. So it should be fairly obvious. You can probably Google it to find the exact route there. And they just randomly started it at the front of the station without any form of warning whatsoever. So that might be one of the positions you could try queuing at. Or you could try asking around for the people with the staff and also where the queuing starts. They might be able to give you a better direction is where it is. But yeah, lastly and not least, the people who are planning to maul your way through the event, the true uh, I don't know where I was going with this joke, like I don't know why I put on the sunglasses here, but the true mall lads of the event, the people who are really planning to, and I would say that this is the group of people who for whom the event is not so much a thing that they want to explore and enjoy, but something more that they really just want to go and get the things that they want, spend the whole day doing that, browse very little, and just be done with the event. For some people, like you know, you don't really get many chances to come to Comic Cat or to Japan, so to want to just focus first on buying the stuff you want is totally a fair point. I can understand that as well. 
if you're one of the people in this group, I would say the best thing you could do is to probably just get the early ticket about two months before. You should start looking at the website to try and figure out whether or not they've begun selling the early tickets. But yeah, even without the early tickets, for the most part, you should still be able to buy most of what you want. Unless you're one of those people who has like 10 wall circles that you really want to get to or something. For those people, I would recommend not only just getting the early ticket, but to also go to the event hall venue at around like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. thereabout. Uh, make sure to time it, like get a location that is good, such that you can take the first train and be there without much issues. But yeah, for these last two groups of people, you're really going to want to ensure that your map game is on point. You definitely want to make sure that you not only mark down every single circle on the map, but you really want to make sure that you understand which ones are popular and how popular. Like one good way to do it is to basically look at the uh, Twitter profiles for all of the circles that you're really interested in. Go back to the previous comic cat period, like just scroll all the way back as long as that would take and try to figure out if they sold out at all and if they sold out how quickly into the event they sold out I would say both of those are very important to know because if you're gonna try hard you may as well just go all the way at that point I don't know if you want a physical catalog the catalogs tend to be really big so personally I do collect these as well like the Comic Cat 1021 over here it, it looks like inverted on my camera but that's also a little confusing for me but we'll just ignore that for now as you can see, they do be fairly thick. And I would say that, aside from the fact that they do come with a uh, built-in catalog here, like you do have the map here that you can also tear out and use instead of printing. Like I, I feel like, aside from that, this ain't too useful because more often than not, they don't really have a good way to show you everything the same way that the online catalog does. But if you're the kind who just wants to get this and collect it, this is still pretty cool. One interesting thing about the Comic Cat catalog is that on the spine, they do the Dragon Ball and Hayate no Gotoku thing where if you line it, all of the Comic Cat like catalogs up, this image here should line up across all of them. Though, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of weight they're putting in the room. You know, as long as you don't live in a cheaply made Japanese house like I do, the floor probably won't give way below you, so you should be fine. That said, there are also gonna be some physical items you'd want to bring along as well to ensure that the day itself is gonna be as comfortable as possible within like the hellhole of fire and ice that it is. For example, you might actually want to bring along a small safari chair. This is gonna be quite useful for multiple reasons. Am I winning down there? It's more comfortable than sitting on the ground and it also prevents your feet from going numb sitting cross-legged for a long period of time since the average sit if you're planning to try hard and mold for this event is going to be around 4-6 to six hours so you probably are going to want to get comfortable and more importantly than that there's also the fact that if you're going in winter or even in summer for that matter because of the slightly more extreme weather you kind of don't want to sit on the floor as the more your body is in contact with the ground the faster your body will chill which is not a good thing especially in winter so like this you can minimize the contact with the ground and as far as possible you probably want it to be something a little more portable as well for example of this one i can just do this and it's already in as compared to something with an entire backing like an actual camp chair which may take a long time to set up in doing so, you can kind of ensure that you can also use this while curing during the event as well. See? Next up, you're also probably going to want to bring a tote bag along. I have mine right here. As you can see, it's a very normal looking grocery store tote bag because I don't want anybody to be looking at the bag and judging my taste in anime. But the reason why you're going to want this as well is due to the fact that it allows you to very easily get your dojins in and out without having to constantly move and shuffle your bag. Especially since with the slim books, they can be pretty big sometimes, or even with some of the other stuff as well. You kind of don't really want to constantly have to move a bag, and a sling bag probably will not cut it. So you're going to want something like this, which allows you to quickly and easily slip stuff in and out. The event does have very little space and it's very cramped. People are constantly pushing each other just to get past. So in order to ensure that everybody can have an easier time doing that and you don't have to waste more time at a specific booth because you're fiddling and diddling yourself trying to get out your wallet, you can just put everything in there and make things easier for both yourself and everyone else as well. Now the next item you probably won't be always using since it really depends, but it always helps to be prepared for the worst possible scenario. And in those cases, you're probably going to want to bring along something like a poncho. And again, what some of you might be saying, right? Like, eh, but I'm a man, I don't want to use a little kid's little like pussy ass raincoat. Which, look, I, I get that you want to pretend to be a manly man with your inferiority complex, but 
what you need to understand is that when you're going to this event, the queues are going to be really cramped. Everyone's going to be shoulder to shoulder. If you're going to open an umbrella, it's going to be a lot like being in a prison, right? Everyone's going to open it, and your umbrellas are going to be either a top or a bottom. Except unlike in prison, this time you kind of want to be the bottom, because if your umbrella is way too high, what's going to happen is that the rain is going to drip off your umbrella onto someone else's umbrella and then back onto you, potentially. And it's going to be a mess, and with the potential of wind with the rain, it also means that your umbrella may not fully protect you from the rain, so... So if you do this, you can ensure that if your bag is also covered by the poncho, everything is likely to not get wet. And this is something you especially do not want to happen with the stuff that you buy. Right, the only thing that should be getting wet at this event is... You, you when you get home, ha 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 ha. Fuck me, okay. Next up, let's talk about hydration, because obviously staying wet and, no, keeping the insides of your body wet in this kind of summer heat especially is going to be really important. And either way, even in winter, it's going to be pretty packed. And so the overall temperature indoors is going to be a lot hotter than outdoors. So you're going to still want to ensure you stay hydrated or things could end up very bad. As Twitch always tells you, right? Remember to keep hydration bought or something. I, I clearly am uh, not a boomer, all right? But that said, while well, Twitch usually tells you to drink water, the thing with water is you're probably going to need a little bit more of it to stay hydrated. And what this also means is that there's a higher likelihood that if you're going to drink a lot, you're going to go and piss a lot. Which, the thing with this event is you want to as far as possible within like a healthy measure, ensure that you don't go to the toilet for too many times due to the fact that it just simply is going to be a fairly long queue at the toilets more often than not. And so you're going to want to ensure that you minimise while staying and ensuring that your water intake is healthy. And the best way you could do this is to not go with water, right? This is ass in the trash. Oh shit, yeah, I should probably not do that. Okay. Rather, you're probably going to want to go with something like maybe a sports string because it helps to replenish the electrolytes in your body faster. See this here? You can't see the brand because I'm not sponsored by them, but... of the gods. That, that, that went a little worse than planned actually. That actually went a little worse than planned. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. See? It's precisely because of reasons like this that you're gonna want the poncho as well. See, it protects the body even from you completely like rain rotting and spilling water on your own face instead. You know the worst part is I actually didn't bring any like spare clothing so this might be a little fucked but okay. Aside from that, you also probably want to prepare something to eat if you are someone who really eats their breakfast or if you are someone that wants to ensure that like me, you don't really want to end up shitting during the event or shitting your pants in the worst case because everyone's already smelly enough from the sweat, you don't want to add more to that. You're gonna want to eat something that preferably won't cause like too much disruption of your bowels and like the night before it might be fine but especially when it gets to the morning of the event itself you probably want something light instead i mean you can probably have a good lunch because by the time you do take your lunch you'll probably have seen most of the stuff you would want to by then and even if you go take a shit after it probably should be a, a little less rushed to see like casually the rest of the stuff that is there but in the worst case you're probably going to want something like a, uh, a a protein bar or maybe a energy bar something to keep your stomach full but you see, the thing with this is that there just are a lot of crumbs to it, right? Because it's a biscuit and all. Look, look, look at how dry it is. This thing is probably as bad as eating the sand in the Gobi Desert or something instead. Poncho. Protects against even the crumbs. But yeah, something like this it can be very dry and it might make you even more thirsty and that might be a problem as well. So what I personally would do, for me at least, you, you don't have to do this yourself. It's, it's just a stupid me thing is I would get a uh, gelatinized version of the thing instead because with jelly, it kind of does do about the same thing but because it's liquid, even if you're an old boomer like me, you can eat it just by going like... Yum yum! Nutrients in my thumb! And lastly, and this item comes at a very timely time, you're gonna want to bring some kind of tissue or wet towel or napkin along just in case. You never know what might happen. And something like this, which comes in a plastic bag, is fairly convenient and portable. The reason why you're going to want something like this is just in case, you know, you want to wipe the sweat off your body. Maybe some fat, sweaty neck bit touched you and you really don't like it. You can just go like... Oh, oh, okay. Or if you're like me, accidentally spilled... Oh no, there's rain. I mean, uh, 
Yeah, oh no, I, I clearly didn't spill drink on myself, there's rain on my poncho. I, I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's something you could do. I could use it to clean my glasses, right? There's a bunch of like fucking shit on it now because I sp spilled uh, energy. I mean, there's rain on my glasses. See, we're, we're, all, we're all prepared for all sorts of scenarios. No, 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 okay. No, 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 this, this, this is not something weird, okay? You're not supposed to be doing that with tissues at the event itself. Go, go, go do that in the confines of your own home, but for the event itself, you're gonna want to have some around just in case because you never know when you might need it. Be it to clean yourself, to clean someone else, it's a little strange, but or to clean a table that's too dirty for you to eat your lunch on, you never know. And so it's better to be prepared. But yeah, I would say so these are some of the things I personally would prepare for the event just because it makes things a little more comfortable and it does make things a little more... Uh, I guess it makes what I'm bringing a lot lighter while also being as versatile in case like something unexpected does happen. But that said, we'll be moving on to the next part of the video now. I'm feeling really hot standing around in this poncho in the middle of like this heat, so Let's, let's move on real quick, like... But yeah, I guess that's all the things that we need to talk about when it comes to preparing for the event, except for how things go on the day itself. Now, that can change quite a fair bit, but we can talk a little bit about where you need to go or be as, depending on whether the circle you want to go to is in the East or West Hall, or the South Hall. The place where you need to go and queue up is something that you need to take note of. So if you arrive at any time before the event starts, typically you'll see them filtering people around here. If you are planning to go to what is considered the West and South Hall, you will just go straight ahead from here over that way, all the way up to the building if there's no queue. Otherwise, they'll probably direct you right towards that way, straight down all the way towards a quite likely the bridge much further down and that's where the end of the queue would be instead. Otherwise, if you're planning to go to the East Hall and for some godforsaken reason you didn't go to Ariake like a good boy and you came to this station because you wanted to, I don't know, feel the vibes or something, because you wanted to vibe, then you would then from here go on this way, all the way across and people will probably direct you diagonally straight till over there where the East Hall actually is. You see this very scuffed looking gate over here? This thing that looks like you're probably going to be entering to go and like buy drugs from your local Japanese weed man. This is actually where you'll be entering from if you're going into the uh, East Halls. Plus, if you're actually going to be purchasing from the wall circles, you will probably be queuing outside like along the roads here as well. Which is part of why I say you might actually want to bring in a poncho and a chair because you're probably going to be standing on the side of the roads potentially for hours on end. For those of you who are planning to go to the East Halls, I recommend stopping at Ariake Station on the Yuri Kamome line instead of taking the standard train lines to the station where you're right in front of Big Side. Yeah, it's a lot less flashy, but it puts you on a direct course straight for the East Halls instead. So you don't have to deal with the crowd of people who are going to West South and you don't have to deal with all the other dumb dumb people who didn't realize that this is faster of a way to get to the East Hall and come from the other direction instead. But yeah, lastly, when it comes to any rules or etiquettes for the event itself, I guess some important things to take note of is that first, you're gonna want to bring mostly cash there. And that may sound like a bit of a weird rule thing or etiquette thing, but it's mostly due to the fact that many of these Tojin circles, they are literally just like, random peeps A and B being there selling their stuff and so most of them don't exactly have access to a card reader. Granted you might find some small number of circles that do but the majority just do not have access to something like this so the only way they can accept like a currency in exchange is if you pay them directly in cash and when you do try not to bring the 10,000 yen note there. If possible try to exchange it for a smaller note before the day of the event itself because with the big note half of the time because once again these are fairly small circles they may not exactly have change and it would also drag out the amount of time it would take them to give you change even if they do have it and if they don't the whole thing just falls apart into this very awkward situation so the best you can do is that since most circles sell stuff around like one to four thousand yen you just bring a bunch of thousand yen notes along that and do not run in the hall this is not me telling you like your naggy old mom. It really is just the case that if you do, the staff may stop you and time you out, which means you're just wasting your own time. And you might also bump into someone else, so you kind of want to avoid running in the first place so you don't get into any issues either with the staff or causing some injury for someone else, especially with how packed the area is. So more often than not, you probably wouldn't get the chance to even run, especially if you're not in the first few groups. 
But especially if you're in the first few, you don't want to waste your time getting stuck in an extended timeout, so just don't. Preferably, try to actually figure out what you want to buy before getting to the front of the booth. For most circles, we can probably find the information on what they are selling on their Twitter or on their Pixel. They will probably put out a little bit of a uh, menu of all the stuff that they are planning to sell on a day. And if like Japanese is something that you find yourself not wanting to speak or find it complicated and don't want to like feel awkward with it, as long as you know what is being sold beforehand, it's a lot easier to just point at the menu and say what you want. So I recommend just prepping in advance in such a way. One thing to note as well is that sometimes within the hall, you'll see people with signboards on them at the back of the queue. Typically, these are the people who are there to signify this is the end of the queue. When you get into the queue, ask them for the signboard and take it from them. That's just common courtesy, the person at the end. The latest person to enter just like grabs it from the person in front. If you don't want to like speak to them like specifically and tell them that you'll take it, you can just like mumble something and be like, ah and they'll probably like pass it to you since they know you're probably supposed to be there. Or if you want to speak Japanese, you can just tell them something like mochimas or something like that. So that will work. And the thing is that, however, it's also important to note that sometimes those are used to indicate the middle of the queue. And uh, the end of queue kanji is typically this, and they will typically have this written on it, but sometimes it might be difficult, I can understand, to you know, look at the moon runes and figure out what it is. In the event that it doesn't have English on it, just ask the person there directly in English or if that doesn't work, then try asking them in Japanese as well. If both do not work, just Google Translate the line and ask them because sometimes the people working there aren't Comicat staff, they don't understand English. If you need to rest in the middle of the event, typically you can just sit around outside of the hall itself, like there's a car park that surrounds most of the external of the building. You can just sit along pretty much anywhere there or if you're in the middle of the hall, along some of the pillars and walls, they will allow you to sit as well. But if you see an area demarcated and like tape, typically that means do not sit in that area. So as long as you're not there and you're not in the hall itself, most areas are free game. Because they typically, whether or not that is an actual full-on resting area, it's very ad hoc. Sometimes they have it in the big triangular building that you see in the uh, very iconic images of the building. Sometimes they don't have one at all. Sometimes a company sponsors one in the corporate booth, so it's hard to say now whether or not there'll be one. But there might be, and if it is, it's typically like some of these spots instead. Best way if you want to find a proper resting spot, either you enter a store, a restaurant to eat and rest, or you go to the staff and ask them directly if there's a rest area, because it's very hard for me to say that there will definitively be one because it changes every year. But that said, I think that should be about everything that I really need to talk about when it comes to preparing for this event. These are usually the things that I personally would take note of and prep for the event, because these are the things that I feel are very important to know beforehand and like get prepared so that you will not have too rough of a time there. I hope this video was informative. If there's anything that you feel that should be brought as well or that I left out and that should have been talked about do feel free to let me know in the comments like me telling you guys like what I usually do feels like hopefully it helps somebody but it also helps even more if everybody who does like have their own little tips and tricks also like chips in in a way so if you have anything you feel that could be added onto all of this do feel free to add it down below and thank you to everyone for watching once again and on top of that, thank you to the following very cool people for helping to support the channel as well. You're yeah, all very, very, very cool people as well. Check out the names. These are pretty cool people who will help to support the channel. And you too can with like through Patreon or PayPal directly if you feel like it. Usually the content on this channel, it varies quite a fair bit from stuff like me talking about the game industry as someone who works in it to just talking about Castle Gates or Dojin events. Kind of like this, except that I talk about more what happens at the events, especially the smaller events as well, since those feel like things that don't usually get talked about as much. So if you feel like any of that content sounds interesting to you, do feel free to like and subscribe. Yeah, I was thinking of like actually like moving on the chair, but this old chair is like missing so many screws on it that I'm actually afraid of like the whole thing just falling apart and exploding under me, so not gonna do that. Hopefully I get a new chest soon, but 
till then bye